Why is my ex stalking my social media stories? Is it better to block or let it be? Well, typically, if you've had a breakup and there was a period of no contact or you just broke up and... Because oftentimes a guy's trying to figure, is she going to come back? Does she still like me? And so you're looking for evidence that she's kind of creeping your social media. And so if a girl is watching your stories, you know, you can see who watched them. It's obvious that there's still some kind of interest. It may just be that she's trying to keep tabs on you and make sure you haven't monkey branched to another girl yourself while she still can, continues to explore somebody else you know what's going on with somebody else she may be talking to or whatever and so if the guy's hoping to get her back and because what happens most of the time is the guys have over pursued and in essence talked the woman out of liking them and date wanting to date them and so they often get friend zone and they don't stop they keep pursuing they keep calling they keep texting until they get blocked or they just get ghosted outright and then at some point the guy he comes across my work or he just realizes that she's not even responsive so he just stops everything and then doesn't see anything for a couple of weeks and then maybe a month goes by and all of a sudden he notices that the ex is now like watching every story and then she starts liking things. And then, you know, she might start commenting on public posts. And if she comments on a public post, she just, you know, you like her comment. But other than that, you're not going to reach out or anything. She's got to reach out to you. And oftentimes it's like if the woman's starting to come back, like if you just let her go and she knows that you've moved on and you're dating other girls and you're having a a good time and then she starts to fear that if she doesn't decide whether it's the other guy or you or somebody else that she'll lose you to another woman and then it'll make her when a woman is in that situation with multiple guys and she's trying she's going to be attracted to whoever makes her feel the most attraction mm -hmm. and so what happens is she starts testing all the guys that she's talking to and dating or seeing or whatever and pulling back from them to see how they react and typically what happens is when you're like a no contact and she senses that, you know, you're moving on and you're probably dating and hooking up with other women, then what happens is she'll pull back from those other guys she's talking to to see how they react. And oftentimes they don't react too well. They start pursuing. They start calling more. And then she starts telling them, oh, I'm confused. I'm not sure where I'm able to be. I'm still not over my ex. And, and then those guys try harder. And then the ex, meanwhile, is doing nothing because he's in no contact. Because he pursued until she basically blew him off. Mm -hmm. So until she reaches out and mentions, you know, getting together or, you know, slides into his DMs or sends him a text, it's like you assume she's not interested. And so it's, what happens is she starts looking at your social media. Then she'll start liking your, your posts. Then she might start commenting on your posts. And if you just like her comment, you're still not doing anything. You're not trying to ask her out. You're not trying to hit on her. And meanwhile, the other guys she's talking to are pursuing, and you're doing nothing. And it's your indifference that makes the difference. It's what creates attraction. It's a scientific fact. Women are more attracted to men whose feelings are unclear. Mm -hmm. And then when she sees you don't do anything and you don't react, you don't you know, send her a message, then that's usually where she'll either send you a direct message on that social media platform or most often she'll send you a text, and usually it's the lame-ass pickup line that you ladies all like to use which is hey hey i did an email yesterday hey this girl got back in touch with this guy after a few months of, of no contact and he's now with with that girl it was an ex-girlfriend his that he broke up with when he moved away to go to school plus it was she was like only the second girlfriend he ever had and he started applying what was in my book he moved to new york and he was getting laid left and right and then he started thinking about his ex because now he's finally done with school come to find out she lived like a couple hours away and then he asked her out on a whim and she's like hey i'm dating somebody he's like well, hey, well if it doesn't work out get in touch and then i don't know it was like eight months later a year later whatever it was she got back in touch because she had broken up with that the guy she was dating and they started dating and now they're back together and they're probably gonna end up getting married because nice. since that you know she was the second woman he'd ever been with now he's dated dozens of women, slept with, you know, lots of other women in the meantime. So he's got to see what else is out there. And so now he can really appreciate what she brought to the table. And so their relationship is pretty solid now. And so mm -hmm. and that, that instance, it was the circumstance of life. They were both young. They were both in college. He was moving countries, and he didn't want to do long distance. Plus, it was, it was the second woman he'd ever dated and slept with his whole, his whole entire life. He, he didn't know what he didn't know. 
Mm. So we had plenty of experience, you know, explored humanity, if you will, a bit, and things kind of lined up, and she came back into the picture. And mm. so it's, it started with a hey, you know. What do you think about, okay, um, what if this guy got an, a girlfriend that he had been seeing, and then the girlfriend asks him to block the ex on social media? And delete the pictures and stuff. off the, Just the Instagram, not and through the phone and stuff, but just, like, where other people can see it on Instagram. I would just leave it. I'd make it private. Because those are, you know, old memories and stuff. And I can, you know, understand that some women are going to get jealous and not going to like that. But if you got stuff going back years, you know, maybe you've been on Facebook for 20 years or whatever, you, you might have different relationships. You might have pictures of your kids. Or pictures with people that aren't alive anymore. And you, you don't want to delete that stuff. It's like those are, you know, great memories. Yeah. And so it's kind of unreasonable with somebody you have a history with, especially if you got kids or something like that. It's like you, you shouldn't have to go through and moderate your social media so the person that you're dating feels mm-hmm. secure in the relationship. You can always archive the pictures, too, so that's not, like, public... So when people come across the Instagram pages, you don't see those pictures. They're just in the archive files. Or if you're, you know, like some of you know, the younger people, like, you know, they're very selective. And if a post doesn't do well, it gets deleted. Mm-hmm. And so they might have been on Instagram for five years, but there's only ten posts in there. And if nine of the posts are stuff with the X, then, yeah, you can kind of understand them from that perspective. If most of your social media is old pictures of you and the X and you just start dating this new girl and there's nothing of her up there... You can understand why she'd be like, hey, you know, you should have some pictures up of me and maybe take those down. But if you got thousands of pictures and, you know, stuff from somebody that happened years ago. Yeah, I'm just saying, like, recently, like your recent, the recent, like, ex, and then you started dating someone new. And then it's like a couple of pictures down. I had some friends that were platinum partners of mine back when I was in the world of Tony Robbins back in the day. And he was dating a girl from the UK, it was really beautiful. And we all went on this big trip up to um, Long Island where he, he lived. There was, I don't know, probably 25, 30 of us. And, um, you know, we hung out. And we just had a shit ton of group photos and stuff like that. And, he, you know, obviously his girlfriend at the time was in there. And they were on my Facebook. And then, I don't know, four or five years later, he's, you know, he wasn't with that girl anymore. He's in a relationship with somebody else. And I had forgotten about those pictures and so at some point I accepted a friend request from his new girlfriend and I don't know, it was like a year, year and a half afterwards. She sends me a direct message saying, Hey, I would appreciate if you would, you know, delete these old pictures cause it's, you know, he's not in that relationship anymore and we're together. And I'm thinking this is like way long ago from years ago. And it's like by the time she came along and he, he was asking me to delete these pictures, I think it was probably close to, seven, eight years after they were taken. And I was like, there was a lot of people I care about in those pictures that were friends of mine. And it's like, I'm not going to just delete these pictures because it's the only copy that I had of them. And so the way, what I did was that I just basically hid the, all those pictures from her and, and him. Mm-hmm. So it was like, because I'm, you know, <laughs> I let them weird. think I deleted them, but they just couldn't see them. Yeah. Because yeah. like, these, these are my personal pictures that I fucking took. Yeah. You know, and it's like some of them had, you know, a girlfriend that I had at the time, and I was like, I'm not deleting those. I don't have them anywhere else. I was like, they're staying up. I didn't tell her that. I just, you know, hid them from her. Yeah, because back then we were I actually said, yeah, using I, I, cameras. I took them down. <laughs> yeah. I, didn't, I just told her that I took them down. Didn't, I didn't tell her that I took them down only for she her. She probably felt so superior that you did that. Because if you would have been like, no, I'm not going to do that, she would have been like, <gasps> Oh my gosh, Corey didn't. Do How blah, blah. dare you? I didn't know. I didn't even know the girl. I, I don't think I. I never she met that. He ended went. up marrying her, and they had kids together. But I was like, yeah, I'm taking those because now, I mean, that's like twenty years ago. Those pictures, it's like, there's yeah. no way I'm taking those down. You just can't see them. <laughs> it's pretty good. I have a folder like that online on my Facebook. <laughs> it's Family only. Family access only? Actually, I'm the only person that can see it. Like, if I go to my Facebook, it's, um, I can see it, but nobody else can see it. It's like my wedding dress Yeah, photos. I wouldn't be deleting it. If, yeah. if certain people are up butthurt about it, just hide it from them or block them. I think eventually I ended up blocking both of them because I think he started spamming me, trying to, you know, 
spammy with a new business he had started, and I just got fucking sick of it. Mm. I just think that's a little much for her to go out of her way to message somebody else. I didn't even know her. I just accepted her friend request because it was his new girlfriend. I was just being nice. And then now she's like, oh, you need to take that one down and that one down. I was like, fuck off. Yeah, I'd be like, um... Who are you again? Get over yourself. (laughs) Yeah, especially she must have been digging hard. Yeah, she must have been going through it. Finding reasons to get upset. Well, the girl that he was dating, she was hot, and, mm. and she was. I didn't think she was attractive at all. I wouldn't have even. The get, new girl. Yeah, that's, that's probably um, why then. Yeah. She felt intimidated. Maybe she had a nice personality. She didn't want him to see those pictures and remember how hot his. Well, that was. girl, you know, she was hot, and he was kind of a pussy, and she had dicked him over. I remember, I remember him telling me how how they broke up, and. Uh, it was kind of shocking because, you know, it seemed like they were pretty happy together. And so they were having sex one time and then she finished and then rolled off of them and just said, I can't do this anymore. Oh right my after they God. got done having sex, I can't do this anymore. And basically broke up with them right after that. So you, he's probably thinking, oh, this is great. I, you know, just made her have a, you know, great session of the indoor Olympics. He's all proud of himself and she rolls off. He's like, I can't do this anymore. What a bit. Tells him she's not into it and that was they broke up right then there on the spot. What a man. <laughs> what a man, what a man, what a man. I guess he didn't rock her world that much. She hit it and quit it. She hit it and quit it. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> oh my god, that's so She'd been hitting mean. it for a while, I forget her like a year. Um uh, She probably got the like the face value and then kinda Got herself out there and then found somebody in the group to kind of. Yeah, he was kind of overweight. Also. She was hot and fit and in shape, and and she was younger. He was in Shallow Hell. Who remember? Tony? Yeah, yep. yeah, I mm. love that movie. I didn't realize how big he was. He's big. He's he's not. He's shaped weird, man. Is like his back and his body. He's like you know because he had I guess a tumor in his pituitary gland mm-hmm. and it caused him to you know, to grow at an abnormal type type of rate. Yeah. And so he's a big guy. He's nice. He's a sweet man. Really, He's amazing. He's the most amazing human being I ever met. I've never met anybody as intense as he is. He studies things. When he gets into something, he wants to learn about something, he obsesses over it and learns about it in a way that most people don't. So he's, he's a genius at what he does. You know, if you ever go to a Tony Robbins event live or even a digital delivery one, it's... He's the best in the world at what he does. If, you know, quick change, going to a good event. You know, I know Chunky's been to his UPW. I was like, you know, I highly recommend it. Platinum Partnership. It's expensive as hell. If you can afford it, it's pretty awesome. You'll meet really cool people. I met one of my dearest best friends who's a Platinum Partner. 